Good morning, Flame, and welcome to another virtual service. If you're a visitor to us today, then guys, I just want you to relax, to chill, and just enjoy what's coming, to take in as much as you can from the service today. We would normally, as a family, we would meet in Cardell Street, Blackheath, Rowley Regis, 10.30 on a Sunday morning. We've paused our in-person services for the last few months just to allow the situation with COVID to settle in our area. But I'm excited to be able to announce that we're reopening the church. We're swinging wide the doors to the building on the 11th of April. Guys, if you want more details, then I suggest you look at our Facebook page. You get onto our Eventbrite page and you get yourself some tickets booked for seats. That's the 11th of April. Yes, the 11th of April, we are reopening the building. The refurb will have been finished by then. All of the snagging will have been done and the new seats will be in place. So it'll be comfortable. Hopefully not too comfortable that people sleep during the first sermon. We'll also be kickstarting our, our new year, our new season with uh, a series on the Holy Spirit and on the gifts of the Spirit. So that's going to be exciting and I'm expecting some big things to happen. I'm expecting a real encounter with God. So guys, the 11th of April, get yourself booked in so that you can be there as we, we launch into this new season that God's got for us. But until that time, we're online and I just want to welcome you to our online service i want to ask you to relax to just take in everything that's about to happen we're going to have a time of worship where we sing and lift up jesus's name we're going to remember him there's going to be a testimony from one of our family there's going to be a prayer from somebody and then i'm going to bring a short word because you've got me again this week sorry about that guys but it'll be okay it'll be a short word this week Okay, but before we get into that, let me just give you some notices. And the notices are on Tuesday evening, 7.30, in the building. I point here as if it's here. It's not in my front room. It's in the building on Cardale Street. It's in the church sanctuary. We are going to be carrying on with our prayer meeting. I would just encourage you guys. It has been an amazing time hearing God share his heart through us, for us, as the flame. Some really powerful stuff has been said and prayed during those meetings. So that's 7.30 on Tuesday evening. If you want to be a part of that, if you want to come to that, then guys, I just encourage you. In fact, not just encourage you. I'd ask you, get in touch with me. Book in. Make sure I get you booked in just so that we can keep uh, control of the numbers. That's all while we're in restrictions. What else do we have going on? Wednesday morning, we have our virtual coffee hour. That starts at 10.30 for an hour, because it's a virtual coffee hour. Wow, I don't, I, I state the obvious so much. So our virtual coffee hour, 10.30, Wednesday morning, bring your own cuppa. And it's a time of just socializing, a time of connecting with people, a time to see others that you wouldn't see at the moment because you're not in church so that's 10 30 wednesday morning on wednesday evening guys that are on the bible course it's continuing uh, we will meet at 7 40 uh, and we will do session four i can't remember what session four is but it's going to be good the feedback forms that you guys have had and some of you have sent back i just want to thank you for filling out those those surveys uh, if you haven't already filled them filled it out then please do your feedback really helps me and helps us to look at how we're going to push and how we're going to present the bible course going forward as part of our discipleship of those that come to the church so that's at 7:40 if you're not booked in for the bible course for this run of it don't worry we will be running this course again. So you will have an opportunity to book in for the next series. What else have we got going on? Thursday evening at 7.15, we have our Zoom life group. If you want details of the login for that, it's a great time to connect socially, but it's also a great time for us to sit and just listen to what God's saying as somebody brings a short thought or a short message uh, for the night 
So that's 7.15 on the evening, Thursday. Zoom details have been sent out or will be sent out on emails. If you're not on our email list, then guys, get in touch with me. I can put you on it or I can just give you the details to log in. Okay, that's for any of our Zoom deeds, any of our Zoom meetings. If you want the details, let me know and I'll send them out to you. Okay, we're going to just take a moment now to worship God. For those of you that are visitors, there's going to be a couple of songs. The words will be on the screen. I'd encourage you to sing along. Nobody can hear you. Nobody can see you. You're in your own house. You're safe. But I'd encourage you to sing along and lift up those words to Jesus, to God. So let's go to worship.
As part of our worship, we're just going to hear from one of the, the members of the flame, one of the family here, who's going to share with us what Jesus means to him, who Jesus is to him. And I'm just going to play this video. I'm going to throw over now to Vince. So Vince, it's all yours. Hi, Church. Uh, my name is Vince. I joined the flame during the pandemic. Um a little bit about me is I've been a Christian for 20 years or so, give or take. Um, come from a non-Christian background, so my family never went to church. They didn't believe in, in God. No, they still don't, sort of thing. Um, it was hard growing up. It was easy to sin because you grew up around it, everyone else was. Um, I was 16, I had a child, which sadly passed away, eight months old. Um... Yeah, um, I questioned everything. I walked away from the Lord. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know how this could happen to me, to anybody, you know, to to a, to a baby. You you question and it's hard. Um, I went and I moved to Cornwall, where I lived a very sinful life. Um, did drugs, drinking a lot. Questioned everything. Didn't want to live. You know, um, tried to be commit suicide quite a few times the Lord always put someone there to save me uh, now looking back on it and you realize you know well why 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 was they there you know and then you realize it's because it's his plan you know so yeah um, I moved back to the Midlands got my life together got off the drugs moved back to the Midlands um, Steve and Gorham reached out to me we hadn't spoke for years um, through Facebook, saying that they had the church football team for church on the rock. Um, I joined the football team, and it was nice to see everyone again. Um, <laughs> for about eight to ten months, I think around about a year-ish maybe, he was trying to get me to come to church, even if it was just coffee morning, to get me back in touch with the Lord. And I didn't believe I was good enough, and I didn't think the Lord would forgive me. And I didn't think the people around the church would forgive me because of the things that I'd done. I thought I was going to be judged by people. So I didn't go for a long time and I put it off and put it off. But boy was I wrong. I went back to church. I felt the love of the people. I felt the love of the Holy Spirit just, just cleanse through me, run through me. Um, yeah, and I've just grown from there. Uh, I've got three children now. Two beautiful girls and a boy. Um... Tommy, Evie, Lexi. Evie and Lexi come to church with me, as many of you know, you've seen them. They're very vibrant girls, they love the Lord, which I'm happy with, you know. They're, they're growing and learning through Sunday school. Um, through through the years, God has tested me. 2017, I had bowel cancer. Uh, through Crohn's disease, I've got Crohn's disease, which I was diagnosed with in 2015. 2017 I got diagnosed with bowel cancer um, the Lord cured me I asked him no like, well what, what do you want for me if you if you if you if you with me you know help me fight 2018 I got the all clear so yeah um, then I've lived I've, I've gone to church every week I've loved it the love for the Lord has grown in me immensely you know He's, he's, he's with me and I feel it now and it's, it's not been easy it's been hard but he's been there through my journey he's walked with me all the way through now I realise that um, for everything in life he's, he's there he's, sometimes you just got to seek him a bit more sometimes it's harder to, to realise but he never leaves you so I'm waffling there yeah sorry about that um so yeah, that's a bit of my testimony and my walk with the Lord. He's, he's yeah, even through the tough times he's there, even through the hard times he will always be there. Um, even now, the struggles I have in life, 
you know, um, I got diagnosed again eight weeks ago with liver and bowel cancer. Um, but I'm not scared this time. I was last time. I'm not scared this time because I know he's with me. I know through the signs that he sent to other people that they've told me about. I know through the signs that he sent for me. And I trust in him. And I put it all on in him this time, whereas last time, I put all my trust in the doctors. But this time it's all in the Lord. So yeah, um, that's a bit about me. Sorry I'm not good at these these video things. Um, I've never done one before. Um, thank you for listening. God bless you all. Thank you. Bye. Vince, that was brilliant. For the first time uh, of sharing your testimony like that, you did a great job. And I just want to encourage you on that. Uh, I know, having listened to what you were going to say, that that will have meant something to someone. That will have spoken into somebody's life this morning. And I just want to encourage that person, whoever you are, whether you're a member of the flame, whether you're part of the family already, or you're a visitor to us, get in touch. If that has spoken to your heart, if that has challenged you, if that has kind of pulled on your heart and you want to do something, you need to respond to that, then get in touch with us. Let us talk to you. Let us pray with you. Let us walk with you and support you in whatever it is that God wants to do in your life. But Vince, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your vulnerability. Thank you for your openness. And thank you for just coming and sharing who Jesus is to you. Um, Maria is now going to just pray for us before we go into the message. So over to Maria. Hey church, hope you're all well. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon, hopefully. This morning I just want to thank God for his love, for his comfort and for his protection. I just pray that as we go into this week ahead that God will be with us. I ask this morning as we listen to the message that we will be filled with the Holy Spirit and that we will move deeper into our relationship with God. Pray for each and every one of us as we go through our daily lives that we will feel God's comfort and peace with us and that we will feel his presence close to us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Guys, this is going to be a short message today. So I would just encourage you, just get yourselves comfortable very quickly. Make sure you've got that cup of coffee or that cup of tea in your hands. And, and let's just get into the message for today. You see, today is a special day. You, today is Sunday, but it's not just any Sunday. This is the day that we call Palm Sunday. It's the day we celebrate Jesus entering into the city of Jerusalem. Just, just picture this for one moment. Jesus sat on a donkey riding down a really steep hill down this steep mountain the Mount of Olives and I've walked this path it is really steep and he's on the back of a donkey and he's walking down and in front of him and beside him and around him and the back of him there is a crowd of people and they're throwing their coats on the floor for Jesus to ride over they're throwing palm leaves onto the floor for Jesus to ride over and there is this just hum, this loud noise, this cheering, this shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Guys, let's just watch a short video clip of this entrance into Jerusalem. We set out for Jerusalem. Thousands were heading there for the festival of Passover.
video, you can see that there is a crowd of people around Jesus as he's pushing through into Jerusalem. So what's actually happening here? Well, if you read before this uh, account in the Bible, you'll see that Jesus has just been and raised Lazarus up from the dead. In the book of John, it tells us that the crowd of people that were with him then as he raised Lazarus, then went on before him and told everybody about this miraculous sign that Jesus had done. You see, they went into Jerusalem and they told the people there is a man coming who has just raised somebody from the dead. And because of that, the crowds came out to meet Jesus. Amongst those crowds would have been people that desperately needed healing desperately needed a miraculous kind of wondrous sign done in their lives they needed a miracle and then there were the others who were waiting for the messiah they were waiting for this conquering king to come and push out to get rid of to expel the romans their oppressors to take back their land to take back israel and give it back to them so you see, that's what's going on in this crowd, this noise, this absolute like party time. You've got people desperately wanting a miracle, desperately wanting to see this, this man, this teacher, this rabbi who has done such a miraculous sign as raised the dead. And then you've got the zealots who are desperate for a leader, for a king to come and lead them and take control and conquer the romans you know what the skit guys do a really good kind of commentary of this kind of passage in the bible it's a little bit fun it's a little bit funny let's have a watch of that hey tommy nitty the skit guys here let's talk about palm sunday oh you know that was a block party like all of these palm branches and cloaks on the ground probably like a big bounce house over at the eastern gate it was a jesus parade and the disciples were all throwing candy out at everybody <laughs> hey you think skittles are kosher all right i have no idea what kind of parties that you go to but there were no biblical skittles oh. Yeah, that's probably true. Oh, I bet it was Swedish fish because Peter was a fisherman. All right, there was a party, there was a parade, and Jesus rode it on a donkey, and that was called the triumphant entry. Yeah, and the crowd went wild! Yeah, Jesus! Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, um, let's not focus so much on the parade, but the after party. Oh, that sounds exclusive. Not so much. Yeah, I can see it right now. Like uh, Peter and Andrew with a little late night karaoke. Ebony and ivory lived together in Perth. All right, it wasn't so much a late night party as much as it was the next day in the middle of the afternoon in a Jewish temple. Okay, oh, yeah. A little afternoon vibe. Yeah, I can feel that. Yeah, It'd be like a office karaoke. No, can can we can we stop with the karaoke? No, let's just stop with the karaoke. No, when Jesus saw uh, what was going on, there was corruption in the temple, and he just started tossing furniture around. Hey, can we get the table? Yes. Oh, uh huh. <sighs> no, not how I would have done that. <laughs> But no objections. Um, you see, when Jesus saw the corruption, he got a little ticked off. Yeah, righteous ticked off Ignatian. God's okay with that. Jesus even said, you've turned my house of prayer into a den of thieves. Oh, that is harsh yet accurate. Mm. Yeah, it's like for the past three years, Jesus has been laying out this long feud. And in the temple that day, he lit the match. Boom, baby! The system of sacrifices, the countless rules, the brokenness of human race all turned upside down. But what Jesus was really doing in that moment was turning everything right side up. Yeah, no more animal sacrifices. Jesus would be the ultimate sacrifice. Instead of these external rules, he would change us internally. He would take our brokenness and make wholeness. And Jesus was just getting warmed up. Yeah, the curtain is about to rise on the greatest event in all of history, and that is worth celebrating. That is right. Uh, who brought the karaoke machine? <laughs> None of your business. Uh, 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 he's alive. No, nope. he's alive. That's a spoiler uh, 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 alert. That's for next Sunday. That is a spoiler alert. I love the skit guys, and I love their material. It's got that sense of humor that, that I appreciate. But you see, it's also got a, a great message 
It's a great commentary of the passages in the Bible that talk about Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem and the fact that he didn't just come to Jerusalem, walk through the gates and then that was it. No, he went with a purpose into the temple. And when he saw what had happened in the temple, when he saw what had happened in his father's house, how people have corrupted it, how they'd made it a den of robbers, as the Bible tells us, he got righteously angry and, and went in there and cleared out the rubbish. You see, Jesus came to put things right. That was his purpose. That was his plan. That was why he went to Jerusalem, to put things right. We know that today, Palm Sunday, kicks off this week that culminates in his crucifixion. The ultimate act of putting things right, of reconciling us with God, giving us a way to have relationship with God. Just like uh, Vince was saying in his testimony, how he knows how close God was to him. How God never let him down. How God walked with him. How he now trusts in God with everything that he's got. He can do that because of what Jesus did 2,000 plus years ago. Today and this week. As Jesus started his journey into Jerusalem. On Palm Sunday, hailed as a conquering hero or hailed as a king. Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save me, be my saviour. As he started his journey into Jerusalem and he cleared out the temple, cleared out what was wrong in his father's house, he would continue on that week. To the cross bridging the divide between us and god putting right our relationship with us and god giving us a way to be in relationship with god i told you that today's message would be a short one and it is going to be a short one it is a short one i'm coming to the end you see We've been talking in church, we've been talking in our life groups about evangelism and about sharing the good news. And today, Palm Sunday, is about sharing good news. It's the good news that Jesus is coming to the end of his journey in Jerusalem. He's coming to that place where he goes to the cross, pays the price for our sin, for our corruption. For all the things we've done wrong. For all the things that have got in between us and God. He goes to the cross. Pins them to the cross. Pays the price for them. And today is all about setting up that picture. It's all about starting that week in motion. It's about us heralding in the good news of Easter. So I don't want to say too much. I don't want to go too far into this story. You see, I just want to herald in what's coming next Sunday. Which is going to be a message about the sacrifice Jesus made for you and for me. It's going to be a message that shows us how Vince can say what he says about Jesus and how everybody else that has shared their testimony over these last few weeks, how they can say what they've said about Jesus. It all happens on Easter. It all happens at the cross. And today, Palm Sunday, is the day we celebrate Jesus' journey into Jerusalem, kick starting that week. So, guys, I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know where your head's at. I don't know where your heart's at. But what I do know is that Palm Sunday was for you. 
that Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem to a death that he knew was coming and he did that for you today can be a celebration time for you if you don't know Jesus as your saviour as your Lord as the one that died for you so that you might have a testimony of a relationship with him with God then you can today all you need do is call upon the name of Jesus and say Jesus Hosanna save me and then Jesus will because the people cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus, save us. And they wanted a warrior. They didn't ever expect Jesus to go to the cross for them. To pay the price that only he could pay. To buy them out of slavery. Out of the slavery of sin. Out of the slavery of the corrupt world they were living in. Jesus did come to save them, just not in the way that they thought or expected. He came to save them on the cross. And he came to save you and he came to save me on that cross. So this Palm Sunday can be your day for shouting Hosanna. It can be your day for shouting, save me, Jesus. From my addictions, from the drugs, from the alcohol, from the financial problems I've got, from the health issues that I've got. Lord, from the chains that hold me down, from this world that oppresses me, just like the Romans did to the Israelites, to the Jews. And I know that Jesus will willingly go to a cross, has already willingly gone to the cross for you in answer to your cry. Hosanna, the Lord is near. The Savior is here. Jesus, Lord, the one who was promised. Because all of history whispers his name, our futures won't be the same. There, at creation, present in our pain, eyes fixed, prepared to wear my shame. Hosanna to the highest name. Hosanna, the one who saw us in our pain and was moved when we were in need of rescue. When we were far from God, he moved in the town. Because he went through hell to bring heaven to earth, we shout, Hosanna in this place. Hosanna. So today, we'll shout his name because there are not enough mountains to bow down to give him the glory that he deserves. So we'll lift our voices like they lifted branches. On the Sunday before Calvary, seven days to stand amazed at the one who will be forever praised. Hosanna is all we can say. Guys, take care. God bless. And remember, Easter Sunday's coming.